Hey guys, this is Alexei from Ace5 Education. I am going to teach you how to make this gingerbread man, how to model, how to apply materials to him, and then how to render him, do some lighting. Nothing complex, just some simple GI setup, a bit of ambient occlusion here and there. Um, this tutorial was an idea of a friend of mine, his name is Jose, he's from Mexico City. I promised him that I would say this in my tutorial, so there you go, man. Awesome. So in this first little introduction bit, I'm going to talk about a bit how I worked on this concept, how this concept came about, and what just small things that I do when I, you know, when I'm doing something like this. So first things is he said he's making a gingerbread man for something, or a job or school assignment, something. All right. So the first thing is you, know, you Google him, and you know you find stuff like uh, this, for example. You have the Shrek ginger, you have the you know normal cookie gingerbread man. And then, you know, there's a, the Shrek one comes up as well. This one is like a toy, and as you can see, it has its arms which are separated, which I personally like a lot more than the regular Shrek one. So anyway, after looking at the internet, I decided that I want to make something like this. But I don't want to completely, you know, do a copy of it because I want to make something more my style and something that, you know, doesn't have any legal ramifications for just flat out copying. So what I did was I... Uh, started sketching stuff and I sketched a bunch of things, but I'm not a very good drawer So then I decided to go into Cinema 4D and you know see what kind of proportions I want And I knew that generally there was like the head the body and the arms. So what I did is I quickly just went I made a disc I Made a little plane. I changed it to one whoops one and one I moved the disc up I scaled the plane down turn on here uh, uh, lines and then just make it editable and you go into point mode editable you don't have to by the way follow along with this is just me showing you like some of the process that I do and then you know scale it down and add some loop cuts here and there it's gonna be down the middle And then make another plane. Give it, place it here. Make it editable. Get us a symmetry object. And add some cuts. And basically, this is what I did. I made this guy just out of simple shapes. And what this let me do was it let me uh, just manipulate the general. You know, so I can get the proportions right, so I can get what I wanted, you know, so it's not exactly, you know, from a, uh, from a, someone else's sketch. It's just like, because my drawing skills aren't that great, I did a couple of sketches, but I wasn't particularly proud of them. And this lets you just very quickly kind of, you know, come up with some rough idea of what shape you want a gingerbread man to be. Like, you know, how big the gaps you want, because it's a lot easier to play around with proportions while you're still, you know, in the planning phase and with some simple objects rather than, you know, when you already have the model because then you might, you know, end up, you know, with something you don't want and then it'll be a headache to fix it. So anyway, so once I came up with this after doing some sketches and just getting the you know, idea of what were the main shapes that Gingerbread Man consists of and how I wanted to do, you can see it's a bit South Park inspired because the head's kind of bigger, but, you know, not enough to really, you know, obviously claim that. So anyway, after I had that set out, I needed I need to model a wireframe. And whenever I want to model something that I haven't got a lot of experience in modeling, I usually go to a website called TurboSquid. Many of you are probably familiar with it. It's a website where you can buy models for 3D you know, for use in your own projects. Everything is planes, you know, dogs, cats, the textures, mobile phones, architecture. Basically, you know, it's it's probably if if it's been done before by someone, it's probably there. But the good thing about this website is all the high quality models, they provide wireframe screenshots. So for example, if I type in, you know, well, let's go straight for gingerbread man. I'll show you some examples later. And then we make sure to sort it by highest price. You see there's a whole bunch of them here and, you know, these ones aren't really what we're looking for. Although they do provide the wireframe, that's not really going to be helpful in a production environment. But if you find the ones that are rigged, for example, this one here, or more specifically, one of these, yeah, rigged, and it's rigged for animation. 
I personally don't really like this one. Like if I was doing this for a job, I wouldn't be able to use this character because it's not really my style. It's not, you know, it's not what I would, you know, I just, it's not aesthetically the way I want it to be. But what, do you do have, what they do have is they provide you with these screenshots, these wireframes, which are great. Like this guy, for example, I like this guy's wireframe. Yeah, he uses a bit too many selections here. As you can, you know, you'll see that our final one actually uses a lot less polygons. But the general plan of the guy is correct. Like you can see that, you know, you can see the head shape. It's like a, you know, a disc. And then, you know, you can see how the lines flow through it. And you get like a rough idea. And you can see this, like, for example, this edge that goes all the way around in which you can add like a bit of a sharp edge to him. And you can modify how sharp you want that edge to be. So when I was planning this guy out, I used this as reference. Um, and then, you know, I scaled it down to, you know, I got rid of the edges I didn't like, and I scaled it down to be the proportions of the guy I made here. Um, I think actually I might be able to show you somewhere. Old files, view, thumbnails. Yeah, you can see I even started, I was even here. Uh, when I started, I was even thinking of doing, you know, doing it with the broken legs, but then I decided against it because it doesn't really teach any modeling techniques and I want my guy to be a bit cuter, a bit chubbier, a bit kind of shorter, so the broken legs didn't really work there. You know, and then and then I scaled him downwards in all the files. And then I, you know, eventually here you can see I scaled him down at some point uh, here. You can see in this file, there it is, this is the model that I had, and I got rid of the arms because I didn't like when the arms were one big object, I preferred the kind of, you know, the, the edge that you get from, um, like, and this was an early attempt at my guy. I like the edge that you get, you know, between the arms. For some reason, that adds a bit of interest to the object, like when you have separate, when it's made out of separate objects as opposed to just one big chunk. Um, so, yeah, that's what I did. And then, as you can see here underneath, I still have that reference object that I used uh, while planning out the proportions. So yeah, this is what this tutorial is going to teach you. We're going to model this guy. We're going to use a reference image. And yeah, I hope you enjoy it. So, you know, go ahead, click through, and we'll start making this little guy there. Thanks.